Now, the road to the ANC conference has been cleared for President Cyril Ramaphosa. This after the majority of members of parliament voted against the adoption of an independent report into the Palapala matter. 214 MPs, including the vast majority of ANC members, voted against the report. But uh, others within the ANC, like Nkosazana Zamini Zuma, Mseben Zizwane, Mervyn Dirks and Supra Mahuma Pelo, voted for the motion. Will these MPs face consequence for breaking rank? Well, let's discuss this further with political analyst Omtle Njingila. Thank you very much, Omtle, for joining us here on ENCA. Now, of course, uh, we did expect things to turn out the way that they did yesterday, right? Um, I think yesterday was a very interesting political situation that we've seen for the very first time in the ANC, where we've actually seen the ANC displaying its different types of political ideologies in Parliament, and it wasn't as uniformed as we've seen it in the past. And I think this calls for um, quite an interesting conference ahead even of the ANC and an interesting political year ahead in 2020-23. Mm. Uh, well, it's not really over for um, the president, right? It doesn't necessarily pave the way for him to come out victorious uh, by the 20th of December. Yes, he can participate, but there's still that report that needs to be tabled um, at conference by the uh, Integrity Committee on whether or not he brought the party into disrepute. Mm. I think um, the president, this was the first step um, towards quite a tough political time. Um, for President Sudhir Ramaphosa within his own political party, not because it just slipped away um, from the from the reports being tabled for impeachment, but uh, I think what mostly has been highlighted through yesterday is that political parties and political figures use political turmoil and conflict and division to emerge strong in elective conferences. Um, this may not look like a win for President Sir Ramaphosa, but the ANC um, knows that it cannot and it cannot um, afford to dismiss a third president, elected president, and not finish a term in the current political turmoil and crisis that South Africa is in currently. Mm. Uh, speaking about those who voted for the report to be adopted by Parliament and for the impeachment process to possibly take place, uh, many of those names were not surprised. I mean, Supra Mahuma Pelo has been saying from the first time that special NEC meeting was called last week when the report came out that he would vote to have the report adopted, right? And Kosozana Lamini Zuma said the same thing even on this channel. Uh, Mervyn Dirks is an, uh, an ANC NEC member and MP who has uh, said to, during NEC meetings Meetings, voiced out how the president needs to uh, be disciplined because of that recording where he speaks about money that he has to hide is being used, taxpayers' money, etc., that is being used. Um, you know, so we shouldn't be surprised at uh, them voting uh, that way, right? But what did you make of the absence of um, uh, Dr. Zulim Kize and uh, Lindy Wesisulu? Were they, do you think they were cowards in not wanting their position to be shown to the rest of South Africa? Or were they just trying to weaken the numbers of the ANC? I can't really speak on the convictions of both um, the members in question right now. But I can say that for them, as uh, political figures who want to emerge, in the 55th uh, elective conference as a political move i think it, it it did play it didn't play out very well especially for um whatever team or whatever whatever side they are on currently right now in this um in this in this stage of the elective conference but what i can say is that what it did show is that in the anc um, no matter in it, even if you are elected into parliament as a member of the ANC, but when you are in parliament, you are a public servant to the nation. And I think in the way that people they serve by being absent or by being present or by voting in a particular way is very telling of the type of leadership gaps and skills that South Africa really, really lacks at the current moment especially because the ANC in itself has led to have members in its in parliament and outside of parliament in its own party that are revered in society or in other political pockets in the country.
Mm. Uh, speaking about, uh, you know, conference is going to be quite an interesting five days, etc. I wonder what you make of the fact that, uh, you know, these members have been warned that if they don't tope the party line, there'd be internal structures um, that would then, uh, you know, obviously um, try and find some sanctions against them for going against the party line. But these members were willing. Speaking to the media, for instance, your Suprema Huma Pelo openly speaking to the media and saying that he definitely is going to go against the party line and actually even showing it in public. And even uh, your Dr. Zalim Kiza and Lindy Wissusulu not pitching. Is this, could this be seen as members of the ANC who also don't see the, um, you know, the, the, the weight of um, their internal uh, disciplinary structures, such as your integrity committee, etc., because in any case, sometimes the reports are not, uh, or the recommendations in the reports of their internal structures are not even implemented. Hmm. I think with the internal processes of the ANC and how it disciplines its members, it has been very toothless. Um, even with that approach of saying, um, uh, members of parliament must toe the party line because the space, the space of parliament is a space of protest. It's a space where political debates should be tabled in a way where all members feel comfortable in voicing out their convictions, their values, in voicing out even their political ideologies that they believe in. Um, I think for uh, members of the ANC that voted for um, the report to be tabled yesterday are not in a space of fear because they do understand the political, the political processes and the political progress that the ANC has made as a party, um, but also the current state of its own party as well. And I think um, being the members that they are, they are very quite guarded and politically uh, they have quite a, a huge number of backing within the political ANC not to be disciplined in the point in which most members who voted a no yesterday would want them to be disciplined. All right, um, Omsha, I just need to ask you this question. Um, I am running out of time. I have run out of time, in fact. Um, you know, the ATM saying that it's going to take yesterday's uh, proceedings on review because they believe that uh, the National Assembly Speaker erred when she made the decision not to allow the votes to be done in secret ballot uh, because of the fact that, you know, they were saying that people's lives are in danger. Do you think they have a leg to stand on there? I think they do have a leg to stand on giving... Given the type of t statistics we have in South Africa when it comes to whistleblowing and when it comes to standing up against corruption, there is a high number of deaths in South Africa, especially when it comes to political killings in South Africa. And there's a lack of protection of members who wish to continue with um, protecting constitutional processes, especially when it comes to parliament. So I think the ATM has the right to ask for a reviewing of the processes yesterday, um, but we'll see how that unfolds as time goes by. All right, political analyst Om Tlenjingila speaking to us there. Thank you very much for your time.